We left off on Chav uh, Dalit. We're only third paragraph. Okay, Mrs. Shorim, page 24, third paragraph. So you said the three categories of person. They're the wise, they're the semi-wise, and then they're the fools, which, which are the masses. The wise want to do everything with perfection because they understand based on input, if you, you're fully invested, the end result will be perfection. The others, they have the understanding, but they're not willing to fully invest. The fools, but the fools, the ones who are taken by the material, by desire, they said, look, we don't have to be a chosid, we don't have to be a tzaddik, as long as we have olam abo. So it's enough to be yotze. Although the end result is, is inferior and deficient, it's okay. What do we have to complicate our lives? We're going to have the best of both worlds. Omdom she'la'achas nisho mehem. He says, this third grouping and he says, we have to ask one question to these people. He says, in this world, if a person turns down an opportunity, and as a result of him turning it down, somebody else took advantage. The other person is advanced, exalted, and acknowledged, and he doesn't. How could he, could he tolerate such a thing? A person has difficulty tolerating it. One of his peers is honored to a greater degree, is exalted to a greater degree, and not only that, dominates him. What about if it's one of the, his servants? Or a person who's destitute and seen in a disgraceful light in the eyes of this person. These people, they're not going to be pained. And their blood will boil within them. That's the famous story of Yisrael Salanter. In Vilna, there was a wedding hall where only very wealthy people made weddings. Poor couldn't afford it. And there was this purpose. And he was a shoemaker, very poor man, and over time became very wealthy. His daughter was going to get married. He was wealthy. He was going to make his wedding in the same wedding hall with all the wealthy people. The wealthy people, they felt, you know, it's not appropriate. The Shnorah, he's going to want, he's going to make a wedding where we are. You know, he's a, he's a beggar. He be a beggar, you know, there's an expression in Yiddish, Uf, uf Garbet the Shnorah. Give me that expression. Yeah. David, Uf Garbet. No, he worked himself up. He worked himself up, Uf Garbet. Yeah, from a Shnorah, he worked his way up, but he's still a Shnorah. So they felt they were disgraced. This man having his wedding there, they, they're, they're, they're disgraced. So one of these wealthy people was going to teach this man a lesson that under the chuppah, and Rabbi Sosalanta was at the chuppah, of the poor man who was wealthy today. And as the, they were going about to begin the ceremony, this rich man comes with a shoe with a hole in the sole. And he goes to the father and says, by the way, could you fix this pair of shoes for me in, in public? To disgrace him that he should not forget who, wh wh where, he's, where he comes from. When Rabbi Sosalanta saw that, that he was willing to embarrass him to such a degree, he says he questions whether his neshama was at Sinai. If a man could disgrace somebody, embarrass him publicly to such a degree, he says, I question whether his neshama was at Sinai. That was a result of comment. So, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. So, what I'm saying is, to see a person, which you see in the most disgraceful, and he goes and he advances beyond you, he says, wouldn't your blood boil? I mean, this man's blood was boiling. Could you tolerate it? But factually, it's going to be worse than that. In this world, regardless who that person is, but if he achieves and addresses his obligation to what's supposed to be addressed, he's going to outpace him endless times over. When he arrives, he's going to be nothing, and this other person is going to be the old exalted one. Mm -hmm. The Mars tells us in Baba Basra in Rosh Hashanah, <coughs> one of the sons of the Amoron passed away, and then he came back. So the father says to the son, what does it look like over there? What's going on? So he said to him, Elyonim lamato v'tachton lamalo. Those in this world who are exalted, they are low men on the totem pole. And those who are here, low men on the totem pole, the way on top. That's the reality of the world to come. So what you see in this world has no relevance to what the world to come is. And that's exactly what he's saying over here. 
could you tolerate? If the, you know that as a fact, and when we say exalted, advanced, this world doesn't compare to that. Could you tolerate it for a moment? He says, the "Lo," he says. The answer is definitely not. Vaday, definitely. Kinei ein nenu haros kol amal haodom li nosi al kol mishi yuchal losi mekomo bein haom eyosi. He says, "One's initiative is only to be able to what to elevate yourself above anyone and to put your position among all the leaders. That every that's everybody's dream and aspiration." Kinas Ishmirayu, that's the drive of man. The envy of man for one to another, you can outpace your, your fellow. You everybody wants to arrive on top. And if a person sees his fellow advancing, becoming elevated, and he remains lowly, Vadai Shemashi Yizbo Sovlo. That that he's whatever he's gonna have to suffer. He has no choice. He has no choice. The other man is pacing him out. Is going beyond him. And he says, and the he's in his heart, uh, he says festers. It means smokes within himself. Meaning it's 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 intolerable pain to be continued. But that's the reality. No, but he's just bringing that out. Factually, that's what people have to, especially the person who's interested in the material. So if you, you know exactly what that is, so do you want to be outpaced and to be left behind? Yeah, but it doesn't make a difference. No, but you but still. Be too late. It's too late.